G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Today we are talking about NBA player tiers and how to build a championship team. Let's go! talking about practice. LeBron James with no regard for human life. And he beats basketball. Back out to Allen. His three-pointer. Bang! Curry for three. Wow! Unbelievable. Making it rain in New York. We the North are now we the champions. Not the destination. G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys NBA and on Instagram at Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball. Joined, as usual, my co-host, Callum Mack. How are you, mate? Um, yeah, do- doing pretty well. Uh, I'm, I'm obviously checking into the NBA Finals, like like a lot of our listeners yep. are likely doing the same. And it's good to see the Celtics likely are... Uh, Falling apart here. Um, wow, obviously, on. I love my guy Steph. He exploded in Game Five. Um, sorry, Game Four, and Golden State got that fifth game. So it's pretty good. Yeah, look, the the, the Game Five loss was uh, was very disappointing as a, as a fan of the Celtics. <laughs> uh, game Four, I could live with. Like Steph Curry had a had an all time performance. Um, I felt like we played decent as a team. We lost to a, a juggernaut on the night, but the Game Five loss, man, we. We should have we should have won that. We were that that three pointer at the end of the third quarter where Jordan Poole hits that ridiculous shot with like point was one. Big. I felt like that was a big momentum killer, and and um, I think there was a, a possession there where Marcus Smart or there was a technical, and then Marcus threw his like the hand up, and sure he didn't connect with him, but Jordan Poole like sold that offensive foul, and and yeah, I just felt like that it all unraveled from there. We were we were a bit rattled. Um, obviously on the road, but I, I don't count us out yet, man. I know, I know it's it's probably seeming unlikely, but you know we were in this spot against Milwaukee. Um, you know the reigning champs. So game at home, next game. I, I wouldn't be counting us out. Um, maybe I'm not sure when this podcast is actually going to land. It might have to even be after Friday, depending on how much I can get into the editing process, but. Uh, hopefully, by the time you are listening to it, we've either got a Game 7 or maybe the Celtics are the champs. Who knows? But, um, yeah, we'll see. You mean we'll Golden see. State are the champs? Wow, we'll see. It, it, one of the two, obviously, but hopefully... At least, <laughs> I, I, let's pull for a Game 7, at least. Come on, more more NBA Finals is always good. Would you agree uh, with that? I love a Game 7. That, yeah. That's what I'm after as well. Yeah, all right. But today, we're not we're not talking Finals. Well, we are talking more real NBA stuff, kind of linked to the draft. We've been talking a lot of draft stuff leading up to the draft next Friday which is coming along very quickly. But we're talking about player tiers and how to build a, a championship. And all this sort of draft stuff has got me thinking about... We, we talk a lot about, okay, drafting at number one, number two, number three. What are you after? You're after an all-star, a superstar, a, you know, an all-NBA level player. And, and what we categorize each of our players in. And I feel like this has got me thinking about tiers of players because we kind of always think of oh there's a top 10 then there's the all-stars which is like your top 25 and then there's the top 50 and but I wanted to break it down into several different players and different categories on where each of these players fit because I think those words and those labels get thrown around very loosely um and and I wanted to sort of sit down and categorize it and uh, and go through that with you today, Cal, and and we can have some discussion on on what we think the landscape of the NBA, especially at the top end, looking like at the moment, and and how these future stars, these future high level prospects, fit into the NBA and where we sort of see them going. So we've got a few different categories. We'll go through these players are quote unquote ranked. Um, but we're not really paying too much attention into the rankings of each player, more so the tier or the category that we've sort of put them in under. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, I know when I've gone through this, these kind of rankings and stuff like that, I haven't spent too much time going, oh, should he be above this guy or this guy? It's more just the category that they're in. Um, now, we'll go through my list, but Callum, you've also made a similar kind of list and, and we can have a bit of discussions on some players that we might differ and have in different categories and, and go from there. So, let's start it up from the top. 
We're going to talk through our, this is like my tier one, and I'm probably going to refer to this in future podcasts. So this is my tier one. I'm labeling these like the MVPs. These are the players that no matter who was on their team, pretty much, they're always a contender to be a championship level team, in my opinion, or at least thereabouts in the playoffs, no matter who's on their team, who's healthy, if they've got a number two, another all-star on their team. These guys will push their teams up up into the upper echelons of the NBA. So I've got eight players in this tier, seven of which I'm fairly confident. The last guy, I'm a little bit less confident, more so due to health, but we'll see how we go. Um, number one, Giannis, I think he's easy. Jokic, Durant, LeBron James, although for how much longer, I'm not sure. Uh, Luka, Steph Curry, Joel Embiid. And then my eighth guy there is Kawhi Leonard, pending health. Uh, Obviously, we haven't seen him all season. Last we saw, I think he belonged in this category, but obviously coming back from a major injury, it it can always leave a few question marks on there. So with my top eight, do you have anyone else in this tier or anyone that you think doesn't deserve to be in this tier, Cal, in the the MVP tier one caliber player? Um, I did have a slightly different order. Okay. Um, So I had Giannis, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Joel Embiid, LeBron James, Jokic, Doncic, and also Kawhi with um if, if he's healthy. Yeah, um, I, I felt inclined to throw one more player in there, but we'll, we'll, we'll discuss them more in the next tier. Um, but that was purely just based off playoff performances. Look, I'll drop a name out. I think Jimmy Butler is <laughs> a playoff it. MVP, <laughs> and I think we've seen that in the playoffs now for two runs. He is a superstar in that regard. But if you're talking the whole, um, you know, carrying your team to the playoffs and carrying them in the playoffs, he, yeah. he's shown the injury stuff that um, throughout the regular season, while he's valuable, wouldn't be within that tier. Um, but, but from what, I mean, I think he ticks the box for a superstar. The yeah. fact that he's gone to the NBA finals by leading a team and, and his performance in these recent playoffs um, uh, up until the conference finals, he probably would have been, uh, if there was a, an award for it, he would have won the MVP for the Eastern Conference before Boston beat him. And that's just because he was putting up stats like 30 points, five and five. Um, so uh, I was hesitant um, and, and I ended up just dropping him into the next tier. But I think, if we're just talking playoffs, um, I think he probably would be in that MVP tier. So Does that makes sense. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. And I think that there's like, like I've got this tier of eight players and I think there's there's another tier that we'll talk about soon where we actually don't have too many players. They're, they're kind of just a half step away from there. And I do have Jimmy in that in that next thing. And he's, he's pretty close to these guys, but I just don't necessarily see him as this like transformative franchise changing level talent. He's a very good player and he's someone obviously who performs really well in big moments and, and I probably hate on him more because I know how much you like him. <laughs> I know I know that that does weigh on my mind. I don't know. I kind of feel like I need to balance you out, but I do really like Jimmy Butler. I think he's a he's an exceptional talent and he's got that kind of X factor when it comes to not just his skill, but that mentality, which I think is is probably his biggest asset, um, which maybe some of these other guys don't have or haven't shown consistently. Um, I was surprised to hear you say Jokic was sort of towards the bottom of that the, that list there, I think was the biggest name that caught my ear. Uh, where did you have him in, in your little list there? Um, so I had him ranked sixth. Right. So you had... Um, so- I'll go through guys before. I think Giannis was the consensus number one. Yeah, I think that's easy. Um, I then have Steph and then Durant, and I just think the body of work, Steph's in the finals right now, looks like he'll win another one. Yeah. And and when they actually do with each other, Steph did come back and beat that OKC Thunder 7-3. Obviously, they had completely different teams back then, but yeah. I think just for that reason and the fact he's in those playoffs, um, you know, NBA finals right now, gave me the edge to Curry. Um, I've okay. then gone for Joel Embiid who I've kind of decided would just so be more valuable. So you've got to beat over Jokic. That's interesting. I do. I think in a playoff setting and throughout the regular season, I think Joel has proven that he can stay healthy. And I think in a playoff setting, if you're winning a championship, um, Jokic can be taken advantage of, of slightly on the perimeter. We saw Golden State do it um, on obviously a weak-handed uh, Denver Nuggets. But that being said, I, I don't think Joel has that weakness while also his offensive skills uh, just... Uh, kind of like put me over the top. Um, and, I, and I've got LeBron above Jokic as well. I, I still think in the playoffs, he can be a more valuable player than Jokic. Throughout the yeah. regular season, totally, I'd, I'd give it to Jokic. Um, 
But I, I, I just think in that playoff setting, LeBron's just that IQ level there. Yeah, I mean, I would argue uh, Jokic is maybe top, you know, th- three players in the league with IQ. I mean, LeBron's probably there as well, and and then maybe you do have someone like a Steph Curry or or, or maybe a Luka Doncic in that in that kind of vein. But um, I, I think that the playmaking for Jokic is something that sets him apart from some of these other guys, and 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 he affects the game in its totality, like a LeBron did or does in his prime. Um, just with the chess pieces and the kind of way he moves players and, and elevates everyone else on his team. Um, so that that's kind of what pushed him more towards the top of my tier here. But again, in saying that, I don't necessarily want to nitpick on, on sort of these guys here. It sounds like we almost do have a consensus top eight. Um, what are your thoughts about Kawhi Leonard? He was the kind of guy that I was uh, the closest to leaving off this list. More just so because I don't know how he's going to look when he comes back. Do you think that he is going to be around when he does come back, if we're projecting forward to next season, when he does come back, do you think he's going to be around this group in terms of uh, this kind of level of player? I think he will. I think he will. He's never really relied too much on his like explosiveness. Um, and, and the knee injury he had, it wasn't like a full-on tear. I understand he still had the surgery, um, but my understanding was it was more of a minor tear. They went in there and fixed it up. Um, so I'm expecting him to come back uh, pretty close to his old self. And, yeah. and his old self was pretty damn impressive. You look at the, the few playoff series before he went down. Um, obviously, he won that title in Toronto, averaging 30 points a game on 49% shooting yeah. throughout that whole playoff stint. Uh, then followed that up with very similar stats, uh, 28 points a game. And, and before he went down uh, in, in, uh, with that knee injury in the playoffs last season, he was putting up 30 and a half points on 57% shooting from the field. Like that's just pretty damn crazy. So even if he takes a little step off from that, um, <laughs> I'd still yeah. probably have him this, in this tier. Yeah, I, I tend to agree as well. And I, I, that's why I have got him in this this range here because I am projecting that he'll come back and still be that sort of elite defender, that elite scorer. I think his playmaking has improved year in, year out as well. Um, and I think that he still will be amongst the best in the league. So I think... To me, there's, there's a clear top eight in the, in the NBA, and, and, and I think that that's, um, you know, I don't think many people would have, I mean, maybe you might have some, like, if, if your personal favorites in there, but I, I don't know if you can really argue, um, you can switch up the order of those eight, but I think that those are pretty pretty much consensus. This next tier here I find interesting, and I'm labeling this the, the Batman tier, okay? So this is like the best player on a championship team. Now, you might not be quite like on that MVP level where you can sort of completely transform a franchise and maybe on, on the these kind of teams, if your team isn't up to scratch, you might not be like right in the mix. But I've got I've got five players in here and, and a few of the guards at the end here, I'm still even then kind of a bit iffy about it. I'll throw them to you, Cal, and then you let me know if you've got anyone different or anyone extra. Um, Jason Tatum, Jimmy Butler, um, Damian Lillard, Ja Morant, and Devin Booker are my five that are in the Batman tier, the tier two best player on a championship team. Do you have a different uh, opinion or any extra players that you want to throw into the mix or someone that you don't think deserves to be in this tier? Um, mine was slightly different. So okay. I did look, I did have Jimmy Butler in this tier. Um, even though, as I said, if we're talking playoffs, he could be in that MVP one, but yep. it, look, if we put him at the top of this Batman list, I'm still okay with that. Um, I, I've then gone Ja Morant, Jason Tatum, Devin Booker, and I've actually um, relegated Damian Lillard um, out of this group. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I, I, Again, you could probably throw the Kawhi Leonard injury concerns to Lillard's way. Um, obviously, his team was very poor this past season. Um, was he close to being in this in this group? Like, was it? He was. Uh, the injury did take was taken into account. I think the age as well. I took into account. Right. Um, I I think. Look, I love Dame Lillard. He's hit a lot of big shots, um, but he did have a pretty good team out there in in, in the Blazers. I've always really. Really like CJ, so I'm actually quite intrigued to see how Damian Lillard goes without um, that CJ. But in terms of what we have seen from a pretty large sample size, um, Damian Lillard did end up going to the Western Conference Finals once, once or twice, um, and got yeah. beaten pretty easily, I think, in five yeah. games against Golden State. And, and they were in a, a weaker kind of um, tier of that bracket. I think they took out the Spurs and then maybe a young Denver. Um, yeah, I can't quite remember. Um, but yeah, I think... 
my, my thing- look outside of that, it's really the second round exits. Yeah. So, so that's kind of why I, I feel like if that's the, he's he's we've seen his prime. I think that's probably his peak, and he's on the decline now. So that's kind of my uh, justification. Yeah, I I understand that, and I can definitely I can definitely um, see the merit in that argument. I just think from from mine, I think that if I swap out Damian Lillard with like a Devin Booker, for example, or even a Damian Lillard on a on a Grizzlies team. I think he has the similar level of production as those guys. I just, I, I was never, I know you're a big CJ fan. I was never a fan of the way that that roster was built around Damian Lillard. I think, sure, you've got good players in isolations, but I think that that team needed to be constructed differently to, to get the most out of Lillard. So I think if you had a better roster construction, um, and, and as we go into these tiers, I, I don't think that like a CJ is someone who was like a, uh, that next level kind of player that I think you need to win championships or at least make finals in the NBA. Um, he was kind of like, in my eyes, I think he's more of like a third best player on a on a championship level team, not your second best. Um, you know, he had that brief stint where Lamarcus Aldridge was there, um, and and in his prime, maybe he was that. But obviously, there was only a se- I think it was only a season or two that that was the case. Um, and Lula was very young at that time, so. I feel like if the pieces had fallen differently, he he might have been there. Now, in saying that, he probably only has one more season, if that, to be at this kind of level. And then, like you said, the age will start to, to factor in. And that's the other thing that we're taking into account with these tiers. We're kind of capturing what the NBA looks like at the moment, but obviously this is going to change and this is going to move in and out. And as these young guys get better, we might see some people break into this. And we're, we're going to be doing this uh, and discussing players in the draft and where we think that they're going to be on these kind of tiers. But I think that that's, that's something to always keep in mind, that these are always fluid and, and these can be proven right or proven wrong or, or things can change as we go along. Um, I did notice you, you had Jason Tatum in this tier. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, look, he, <laughs> I mean, he could win the finals, yeah. right? So he, yeah. he, he could be that Batman. He's two wins away from a championship. Yeah. Um, but I would like to, you know, give some props to that Celtics team. It is a, it's a, a really team. good kind of seven-man roster. It's not yeah. deep in terms of 10-man deep, but, uh, you know, with Derek White coming off the bench and, and uh, Grant Williams as well, in addition to Robert Williams, one of the best center defenders, and uh, your Al Horford, yeah. just an absolute vet. Uh, it's it's just a really good deep team. Everyone can play really well in that seven man roster, which is why he's not in that MVP tier. Like I, I know I'm a big Celtics fan, but I, I couldn't put Jason Tatum with those names above him. I think that he, he probably doesn't quite belong with those guys yet. I mean, he's still quite young. Like he, what is he, 24, 25 years old? Um, you know, he's still got time to sort of take that half step and elevate his game. But yeah, I, I couldn't quite bring him to that game. This is to this go to tier number three, and here's where I start to to branch out, and there's a few names that I can start to add in. I'm calling this tier the Robins. Okay, so we had the Batmans. These are now the Robins. So these are guys like your second best player, the guys that sort of are, are still really good players, but but probably aren't good enough to take to be the best player on a championship team. But they're they're, they're Best function would be as a second best player. So um, going through players in this tier, I've got Anthony Davis, Kyrie Irving, Paul George, Bradley Beal, James Harden, Trey Young, Zach Levine, Carl Anthony Towns, Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brown, DeMar DeRozan, Bam Adebayo, Chris Paul, Brandon Ingram, and then DeJounte Murray is the last player I've got in this tier. A lot of names there. Obviously, we've got a few things, and obviously, this this can start to balloon out. And, and given your definition of the 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 tier that we've got here, what are your thoughts on the players that I've named? And do you have any different thoughts, opinions on anyone specifically, or anyone else you want to throw into the mix? I, I, me personally, there's a few of the younger players that I would have left off this list, list, and so did you. I'm talking like you know some of those younger guys like Zion and. Yeah, yep. able to we'll touch on a bit later, but yeah. something like that, I, I probably could throw in in this um, tier personally. Yep. Uh, I, outside of that, I kind of liked um, the board you put up there. I, I really shuffled around probably some of the players myself, but uh, didn't really make any drastic changes. Um, obviously, I did have Damian Lillard at the top of this list myself. Right, so Lillard's at the top of this list. Anyone else? I know I, I kind of went through them in my rough order. 
Anyone else that you were close to elevating into that next tier? Kyrie Irving was kind of close to me. Um, Anthony Davis was another one, but I think Anthony Davis was in this tier and not like the Batman tier because, one, we've seen it in New Orleans play out, and two, just more his position. I think that being that big man, it's really hard. You've got to be on a really high level. Like, you know, there's only two guys, I think, in in Embiid and Jokic that really can be at that level, um, at that position. I just don't think Anthony Davis, because he doesn't control the court like those other guys does do, uh, his impact is limited in terms of going all the way and winning a championship. Well, let's touch on, um, let's say, Trey Young and Donovan Mitchell, for examples. Yeah. Um, but both of them have, have had some pretty good previous success. Trey Young did go to the conference finals. Um, there was all that hate on, oh, you look at Dontich, hasn't made it to the conference finals. Yeah. Trey Young did, blah, blah, blah. Um, well, obviously not has case now. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that happens. Donovan Mitchell, uh, he's only been to the second round, but he's been there a few times to take that number one seed in the regular season with the Utah Jazz. Um, or was it the second seed? Uh, I'm not too sure of the Suns or them, but they were battling it out yeah. um, last season quite, quite well. So for those young guys, um, I feel like you kind of have to play through, through them predominantly. Um, mm. you, you might find Mitchell settling into a, a rub and roll in the future, but I, I think someone like Trey Young, he kind of does demand to be that, you know, quote unquote Batman and, yeah. and what result that would have for your team. Yeah, it's an interesting one because like obviously we've got a few guys in here that we consider Robins, right? But on their team, they're Batmans, right? So yeah, yeah like you pointed out, the Trey Youngs, even someone like a Bradley Beal, someone like a, a Zach Levine, Donovan Mitchell, um, you know, these guys would be the best player on their team. So that kind of tells us and that kind of gives me an indication that I don't believe in their team the way it's currently constructed, and I don't think that they're going to be able to lead their team to a championship. So, you know, teams like a Utah Jazz is currently constructed. I just don't, I don't believe in them because I don't think that they've got that guy that's going to take them all the way. Now, like we said before, this is fluid, and, and maybe Donovan can ele- elevate himself to that. But I just, I don't think it will happen. Um, now we can. Yeah, we I can think s- that the way I looked at it was like even if you did retool a lot of the pieces around these players in the Robin class, I still think they just fall short. Yeah. Similar to, you know, I had to have Dame Lillard at the top of this list. He's gone to the conference finals once. I personally think he probably has fallen short and that's why I have him in this category. He's a Robin um, just because when he was the number one guy, he could only yeah. take it to a conference finals. Couldn't, couldn't push the arm lid to a, an actual championship. And fair enough. I, I, I totally agree. I, and he was sort of like a guy I had an asterisk next to his name. I wasn't hundred percent sold on it. Um, the only thing that I will say is, obviously, when we think about these Batman and Robin kind of things, we're, all, we're always thinking offense as well. So we're, we're thinking about the guy that we can traditionally give the ball to and he can score and, and go get ourselves a bucket and, and take our team to the next level. I do want to also shout out the archetype or the type of player that's maybe the best team defender, but perhaps the second best or even third best option on offense. So, Okay, so Bam Adebayo is probably the Bam, best example of Bam that. Bam Adebayo right? is a good player in this example. Or, or even if we go back historically, someone like a Kevin Garnett, um, even in the later stages like the 2014 and maybe to a lesser extent like a 2007 um, Tim Duncan, you know, he, he was, you know, in 2014, he might have still been the most important player on the Spurs, but obviously he wasn't putting up the most amount of points. Um, you know, Tony Parker, of course, got the finals MVP, but I would argue that Tim Duncan was still the best player on that Spurs team. Um, you know, those kind of players, even if we go even further back to an Akeem Olajuwon, who was obviously one of the best defenders of all time, but even on that team, like a Clyde Drexler was maybe their number one option or, or they were kind of 1A, 1B sort of thing. So I do think that there's room for these Robins to be the number one option on offense as long as you have a really all NBA defensive player there to sort of cover up their weaknesses and but still provide good levels of of defense where we'll touch on a bit later some players like an Evan Mobley or or even in this draft someone like a Chet Holmgren I think that when you pair them with those kind of players that's when you can kind of blur the lines a little bit between what we traditionally think of as a, a Batman and Robin and just sort of have two guys doing separate roles but impacting the team uh, as a whole in a, in a really, really significant way, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, the one player I did want to highlight on the lower end of things, DeJounte Murray is, is a player that I, I tossed and turned, and I, 
I had him in this tier and then the tier below because obviously we haven't seen him in a in a winning role yet with the Spurs. He's obviously right now the man on the on the Spurs at the moment. Um, we've both sort of. Uh, I, uh, first of all, do you agree that he's in this tier in the the Robins, the tier three players in the NBA? I think he can be a Robin. I think through the into next season, I think that's what yeah where where I would rate him. Um, just because he did do so well. I mean, he put up pretty much twenty nine and nine with yep. two steals. Um, I think the defense is there as well, which is a big uh, kind of impact player for such a guard heavy league these days. So when you take that into account, um, as, as also pretty much just running that team, um, uh, being the floor general. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with him being there. I think he just needs probably a better score scorer beside him. Um, yep. that can elevate a team to a championship level. Yeah. I, I kind of think of it in, if I was to swap DeJounte Murray, um, and Kyrie Irving, or if I was to swap DeJounte Murray and a Chris Paul, DeJounte Murray and James Harden. I think he still does a very similar job to what those kind of players do. And I think that you don't lose out much by swapping those players around. And I think that he can, in some instances, I think even like, for example, like a James Harden, he might even elevate the team further with, you know, better defense, you know, better rebounding. Um, you know, maybe he doesn't command the ball as much. So I think, and I think he would still be obviously the second best player on that, on that player, uh, that championship contending team. So that's what pushed him into that category for me, um, even though he's obviously the best player on a bad well, – I wouldn't say bad team, but obviously they weren't in the playoffs this year. So um, that's why he's in my um, tier there. Let's move on to tier number five. Now, again, we're starting to get very broad here. This is where I'm going to call th- – this is like my good stats, bad team tier or – it can be a third option on a really good team. So you've got sort of two ends of the spectrum here. And again, sometimes it comes down to play style. Sometimes it comes down to mentality. So I'll run through a few names and Cal, you let me know if you've got anyone else you want to throw to the mix or if you disagree. Um, let's go through the players here. Chris Middleton, Jamal Murray, Drew Holiday, De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Halliburton, Draymond Green, Rudy Gobert, Clay Thompson, Fred Van Vliet, Marcus Smart, Ben Simmons, Park, uh, Pascal Siakam, Demontis Sabonis, Darius Garland, CJ McCollum, Jaron Jackson Jr., Julius Randle, and Miles Bridges. Um, I probably could continue and go into maybe a couple other names, but I'm just going to leave it there. There's a lot of names to go through there. And this could have almost takes us to like the top 50 players in the NBA almost, um, in my opinion. So anyone from that list there specifically or, or, or this idea of player that you would um, change or have different to me there, Cal? Yeah, just thinking about it now, I, I think um, Chris Middleton, I would elevate to the Robin category. Yeah. We've seen it work for a championship. And, and I think just what he does bring, I mean, he's a walk in pretty much 25 and five in the regular season, which I think... In terms of if you could define a Robin, that those stats I'd be pretty comfortable, especially since he brings it on the on the defensive end as well, um, and and having that kind of wing that can guard you know multiple positions in your Chris Middleton, while also just being a bit of a clutch shooter. I think he's proven that um, in playoff games in the regular season, this, this guy can hit shots when it matters. I would elevate him into the next level. I think definitely above. Let's say I, I would view him better than a Dejounte Murray. A Brandon Ingram, me um, personally on, on that previous list. Yeah, I, I can see that. Again, he was at the very top of my list. I think to me, the thing that put him down was just the fact that he's played his entire um, like successful part of his career next to someone like a Giannis and Tanner Kubo, and and I think that that does a lot to elevate his ability. Um, you know, he's seen a couple of All Star nods off the back of Giannis just being a beast, and their team being so good and at the top of the standings. I think if you were to swap him with someone like a Jalen Brown or swap him with someone like a Paul George or something like that, he he doesn't quite get the same level of production as those kind of players do. Um, yeah, you could say someone like a Brandon Ingram. I'm just more confident in Brandon Ingram's ability to to when the chips are down or when, you know, say my star player is having a bad game for him to sort of, okay, for this game or for these couple of games, I've got this. I'm going to be the guy who steps up and scores and takes my team to the next level, which I think the, the Robins have to be able to do. Like if your star is having an off night, the Robins have got to be able to step up and I, I worry about Chris Middleton's ability to do that when needed. Like he, he can have good games here and there. 
Um, but what put me down is just my me relying on that. I don't know if I want to do that. The other player I was a bit unsure and I was close to putting in that other tier was Jamal Murray. I think he can definitely move up into that, but I think it might be a bit too early for me to say that just because I think we only we saw a glimpse of it in that playoff series um, before he went down where he definitely was that. And you could say that he was outplaying someone like a Donovan Mitchell, who we've got in that tier above. But I just don't think I've seen it enough yet that I can put him up there. Would you agree? Yeah, there was always that bit of inconsistency throughout yeah. the regular season. And because we've only seen that one playoff stint. It was really um, one where, series. Look, he had two 50-point games. Yeah. I think it was just yeah. ridiculous. Um, but... You know, it was in the bubble. It was in a closed room. Uh, a, lo- a lot of people were some, shooting hotter. in some wax stats in the bubble. <laughs> it, exactly. So you take that yeah. into account. Some guys do get hot for, for stints. Yeah. And for a seven-game series, he was just obviously, um, you know, shooting lights out. I, I personally think where you have him here is pretty reasonable, especially considering the injury that he's coming back from. Uh, maybe this next season, he might be not quite there. And, and, and the season to come, maybe he'll be back on that level. Um, So I think obviously there's opportunity for him to move up because he still is a young guy, um, but I think he has to prove that he's come back from this injury and also can play consistency consistently, which he hasn't quite proven to me yet. Yeah. I want to, I want to highlight some guys we've got on this list here that are again, similar to the previous list. Obviously we've got these guys is like good stats, bad team or third option on a championship level team. So um, the guys I want to highlight here to you, Darren Fox, um, someone like a Demonte Sabonis, who obviously are teammates. <laughs> Playing together. <laughs> Playing together. Um, a Julius Randle is someone who I've got on this tier. Um, you know, those kind of players, uh, to, to a lesser extent, Tyrese Halliburton, obviously he's still a younger player, but um, those kind of players, obviously they're not the third option on their team. They're the first option on most of those teams, and, and hence why we obviously don't believe in them and they're obviously bad teams. So I think the issue comes with those kind of players is they might think that they're the man or the team even worse. So if it's probably worse if the team thinks that they're the man and if they're a Batman, uh, I think that that's a, a recipe for disaster. I think you've got to be a bit realistic and think, okay, if I'm going to be a championship team, Julius Randle's probably not my best player. Um, I probably want to have someone who's my my best player different to Julius Randle. So um, what are your thoughts on those guys? And, and as a franchise who has those players on your books, like what do you what do you do? Like do you try and trade them or is it all about just trying somehow to add that championship level piece, but that, that kind of tier one or two player, which you, obviously we know is extremely difficult to do. Yeah, well, I'll touch on a few of these guys. Well, I'll go Randall first at the bottom of that list. Um, I wouldn't even have him top 50 right now. I'm actually super off Randall. I've sold my stock. Yeah. I, I, I kind I, of view that series as a bit of an anomaly. Sorry, that season. Um, he was second team all NBA. And so, deservedly so. I had him in my second team that year because he was awesome during the regular season. He went to shit during the playoffs. Um, but during the season, he was good. Like, we've got to give our props to him. Yeah, 100%. Like, killed it that season. Um, but I just think something in that playoff series. They looked in on, on him and they kind of just found his weakness. And now every other team, I think, is yeah. doing it. So he's just not the same guy, unfortunately. I think the league just knows how to defend him now. So I think look, please prove, prove me wrong, Julius Randle, but I'm, I'm just not quite there, unfortunately. And, and the contract sucks. But this isn't about contracts. And that's right. I'll, I'll touch on uh, Sabonis next. He, he was on a fourth seed um, for Indiana in the bubble. So that's only a couple of seasons ago. And were they ever, were team, they ever he, a true championship contending level team though. That's but point. they weren't. And I think that's yeah. probably his peak. And and that was a deep team as well was my next statement. You had yeah. a Brogdon who's a great player. Um you, you had a Miles Turner who's a great player as well. And at that point they did a Victor Oladipo, but he was still coming off the injury and wasn't quite yeah. himself. So he, he was the guy in Indiana, I I think. I think fundamentally he was definitely was the guy. And he did bring him to a fourth seed. So that's worth mentioning. So it's not like it's a Good stats, bad team player. I mean, so I think did Julius was, Randall, you know, like I yeah, think they were. And the I am kind seed. of excited to see how he goes with De'Aaron Fox. I, I think that they did figure something out a little bit towards the end of the season and maybe they can elevate e- each other. They're both kind of yeah. entering their prime soon. So maybe, you know, one or two of them um, could elevate a bit up the into the next tier. But I, I still feel that neither of them would obviously get to the MVP, but yeah. maybe one of those two could elevate to a Robin and, and make a bit of a playoff run. Yeah, I think I think obviously, especially if you're the Kings, maybe it is good enough just to get into the playoffs. And I think with two two of those at least tier three, oh, sorry, uh, tier five, we haven't gone through tier 
T4 yet. Um, but those Tier 5 kind of guys, that third option on a, on a championship-level team, obviously you've got two of them, so you've got a one and a two, you're just missing that number one option, right? So um, when, it, when, we, when we bring it all the way back to the draft... This is why the Kings need to, to swing for that upside still because they still need that guy who can be that number one guy. Like if, if Jaden Ivey could be that player or if someone uh, like a Shaden Sharp could be that player, I still think you've got to have to take that swing on that upside because if your goal is a championship... Now, if your goal is the, is the playoffs, I think it's a different story. Maybe you do just want to trade that pick for a good role player and you want to maybe sneak into the playoffs. And I understand the temptation to do that as a Kings fan or a Kings manager. So that's a different conversation. But if your goal is truly to be a contending team, I think you do still need to get that number one option, which I don't think they have. And I don't think that either of those players will turn into. Uh, ultimately, I think they're going to be stuck as like a, a Robin or a, or a third option on, on a good team. Um, and I, you did touch on a bit with in terms of contracts. I think this is where you would, you would start to think about, okay... Are these guys max level players? And to my my answer to that is, I don't think the, any of these guys in these tier are, are deserving of max level money. Personally, I think that that's when you get into a bit of trouble. Um, you know, we throw maxes around because we want our teams to be relevant and those kind of things. But I, I don't believe the players on this tier are worth max money. Do you think there's anyone on this tier that that you would be willing to pay the max contract for? Um, the, the max is a is a weird term. Just it, it obviously depends on your achievements. So yeah. what, what these guys and, have and achieved. your age and how long you've been in the NBA, etc. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Chris Middleton has made multiple All Star um, kind of timelines. He he probably would um, out of all these guys here. He he would be the one that would probably get the quote unquote max. Well, would I, I think- want to give it to him? No, I wouldn't. I don't think it could lead me to a championship. And if yeah. that's what I want in my max player, um, then you know, I guess that that's the answer. I think the only player that I might say, and I think this player has a max contract, is Jamal Murray. Um, just because I do think that he does have the potential to be in that next tier. I just need to see it for longer. Um, so he is someone that maybe I would. And because my team is obviously in a championship contending window, then yes, I would be willing to do that. But I think another player that also got a max extension was someone like a Darren Fox. Um, and that's already looking pretty bad, <laughs> obviously, after um, this past season and the debacle with him and Tyrese Halliburton and all those kind of things. Um, Clay Thompson and your Draymond Greens, obviously, their their team's contending. So the different reasons to kind of why you do that. But um, I think if you if you have the option, you, you, you're trying not to pay these guys max money, especially if you're not already a contending team because then it's just going to hamstring you. You're going to be You're going to be spinning your wheels and not really going anywhere. So those are our thoughts on those tier guys. Um, we're going we're gonna to stop it there, maybe. And, and next time we're going to go through on our next podcast, we're going to go through our tier four, which is the... We, we skipped over some of these guys, but it's the I got next tier. So probably a few names you might have been wondering, where the hell is this player? Where the hell is this player? More than likely, they're going to be in that tier where we think that these guys are the, the next or the future of the NBA and, and sort of they're undetermined as to where they're going to end up just yet. And then we're also going to talk about where the top sort of players in the upcoming drafts are going to fit into these tiers and, and sort of our philosophies on what we're thinking about when if we were the general managers, where we would draft these guys and where we expect for them to be and, and why we're coming to the the reasoning as to what we're saying when it comes to drafting these guys at one, two, or three. But otherwise, that will do it for us today, guys. Make sure if you are listening along on YouTube, hit us up with any questions. Let us know your top eight or your tier one MVPs and who are your who are your Batmans, who are your Robins. Let us know what you think. Thumbs up the video, subscribe. Catch you guys next time. Bye.